Thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. Let's see how it does. <laughs> That's just so weird. I have got my hands on the Tesla full self-driving beta. There is a ton of hype around this, but at the same time, seems like a lot of people are forgetting that this is beta software. So it is not finished. It is there for testing purposes to make it better. So I decided I'll go for a drive, show you what the Tesla is really good at right now and what it still needs a lot of work on. This is a work in progress. It's crazy how fast it's progressed, but this is the current state of Tesla full self-driving. All right, real quick, before we get into whether or not this is something you should really be wanting, what are we working with here? So I have a Tesla Model 3, this is 2019. It does obviously have all the full self-driving hardware that is currently available. And I've been using this for about a day, for like a full day. I've been driving almost all day. I used an entire battery pack just testing this software in all types of different situations. So I've, I kind of got a little bit of a grip on how this works and when it does the best. So let, let's go get driving. Okay, so we're here in the car and the way that this works is just like really any other autopilot and the only difference is you can use it a lot more of the time. So I'm here in a parking lot. I need to go down the road. I set a navigation point in the navigation system. So now the car knows I can go somewhere. So I could just put it in drive and I can inch forward a little bit to get the car going. And once it detects like the road and everything, I can now put it in autopilot and it's driving itself. It's that simple and this is a little bit of a tight road but seems to do very well here but yeah that's basically how it works just like every other autopilot although this is a beta so you have to be paying attention because there are many situations that one you would think it would work in and it doesn't or two where something happens and you just need to take over so always be paying attention if you're using this beta but i mean it, it technically works it's driving for me right now this is this is pretty cool so when you are on a regular road like this there's a few curves but there's no major turns or anything you're just going kind of straight it works really well you have the stoplight control you have the stop sign control all of that works about as well as you would expect and about as well as it does with the traditional autopilot that's built into your car already from the factory or from navigate on autopilot the only thing it really has to contend with now is a little bit more obstacles so there's a lot more traffic that it has to go around the speed difference and a lot of times there are sharper turns than you would get on the highway but considering how early these betas are it does this actually almost perfectly now i will say though there are some things not necessarily about going straight but just in general about the system that if you get in for the first time you're going to be probably a little taken aback by because you don't really experience it in the video and really the main one is how kind of jerky and sharp everything is so normally when you're driving you want to be as smooth as possible it just makes everyone in the cabin a lot more comfortable and it just it's just easier to drive that way you don't end up being very jerky most of the time unless it's an emergency or something like that but autopilot seems to uh, kind of have a mind of its own and it goes exactly the way it thinks it should which means a lot of the time the wheel will jerk really kind of violently you could tell a computer is driving and I think that is the place where you really notice the biggest difference especially when comparing to watching this on videos you don't really see that uh, but you can feel it when you hear sometimes it'll press the brake a little too hard sometimes it'll accelerate really hard and sometimes the, the turning will just be really twitchy but it does it's a little unnerving if you got in the car and it started doing that you'd probably take it out of autopilot because you thought something maybe was wrong there was really only one occasion where it really flipped out I didn't take over because there was no cars around I just want to see what would happen but normally I would 100% take over in that situation because it did not know what was going on and the wheel was going crazy that's kind of the biggest issue but when you're on a normal road like this just kind of going straight everything works really well now going straight is one thing but turning is where you really have to start paying a lot of attention because it's really hit or miss. Sometimes it works great, sometimes it doesn't. So we're coming up to a left turn here. It's slowing down probably way more than I would, but I mean, it's taking the turn. Did that pretty flawlessly. So that was great. Although there are times where it, it just doesn't work that way. It kind of freaks out on what path to take. It doesn't know quite exactly what to do. You get that jitteriness in the wheel like I was talking about, and it just doesn't feel confident. 
And also, one thing, as you can see it doing now, it really likes to take a wide swing of a turn. And then there, it really freaked out and I had to take over. So that's kind of what I'm talking about. Sometimes the turns work great, sometimes they really, really don't. And you that's why you have to be paying attention. You can't be, you know, treating this as, as, as if it's a full self-driving system already. This is all just a beta, but that is where you really start to see issues. Now, also in residential streets where you have iffy lines, that's another area where turning kind of takes the mind of its own. Sometimes it'll be in the middle of the street. Sometimes it'll go to the edge of the street. Usually if there are lines that are really well defined, it does really well, but when it's kind of ambiguous and you don't know exactly where the lines in the street are, kind of has a mind of its own. Here's another turn though, and this one, see, I had to take over again because I wasn't sure the car was going to go fast enough to actually get out of this turn before these cars came. Maybe it would have happened, maybe it wouldn't have. I didn't want to chance that, especially with beta software. So I'll go ahead and send that to Tesla with a snapshot, but now I'm back in and we can go. Real quick, before we continue, I wanna thank this video sponsor, Best Buy and their Black Friday price guarantee. So the holidays are coming up, Black Friday's around the corner. So in this time period, it's a little difficult to know when to buy something because maybe there will be a really good deal. And Best Buy has you covered with their Black Friday price guarantee. So how this works is basically if you are a My Best Buy or Best Buy Total Tech member on a number of select items that you buy, if the price goes down, you will automatically be matched and refunded the money for that difference. Basically, this lets you buy with peace of mind because you know you're gonna be getting the best price no matter what, even if the prices reduce substantially. And there's a bunch of items that have this. There are a few 70 inch Samsung TVs that have that price guarantee. So you can buy now and not worry about the price going down later. Maybe you want this Samsung soundbar to go with it, same thing. Or maybe you're looking for a new laptop. Well, this Lenovo Yoga has you covered. Or maybe you're looking for something for your kids or yourself, I would definitely buy this. Maybe an e-bike from Swift. Well, same thing, price guarantee. Or biggest of all, maybe you need a new fridge. Again, price guarantee on this Samsung four-door fridge. All of these products can be purchased right now so you can get them and start using them, enjoy them as early as possible, but you have that peace of mind with the Black Friday price guarantee. So be sure to check this out. I'll leave the links to all those products I mentioned down below along with the Best Buy site so you can go check out what deals they have and get buying. Now we are coming up on another turning situation where people in the United States seem to have a huge problem with, and I really don't understand why, a roundabout. This one is a pretty simple one. It seems like there's a little bit of traffic, but the car has been kind of with other every other turn, it's kind of hit or miss. So it just decided to go through, so I took over because I did not want to get hit by that truck. Man, see, that's kind of what I mean. Like. I had ten, plenty of time, I wasn't going to get in an accident or anything like that, but it's just so unnerving when the car thinks that it's something you should it should be doing. So there's so many times where I take over and it's still, it's just not quite there. Although, you know, with every single beta iteration, it should be getting better. And at least from videos and from other people I know who have had it, it has gotten a lot better since the beginning. It just still feels not quite, uh, not quite there yet. So this is the situation that impressed me the most because there's a little road here that leads to a trailhead that I didn't even know existed. This doesn't look like a road to me, but it definitely is. And it has really sharp turns. And although it's, uh, let's say, not the most pleasant experience, feels like I'm kind of on a ride, it does it extremely well. And these are very tight streets. Uh, if there was two cars here, I would kind of have to squeeze by the other one. But I mean, the fact that it's doing this is kind of crazy and well, it's getting a little close to that tree, but it is working. And now we are kind of off-road. So, I mean, even off-road, it's working kind of well, which is kind of crazy. But I will stop there because this is now a gravel road and I don't really want to go down that. Uh, but that is a situation that is impressive to me. I mean, the fact that it can do that so confidently, like it didn't really hesitate, it just went for it. Uh, that, is, that is a cool, cool sensation. Well, what's interesting with turning is that sometimes it does the right thing and then sometimes it doesn't, even though the situations are almost exactly the same. And it's just kind of a, it's interesting. I, I would love to know what the computer is actually seeing and what the computer's thinking. Because for instance, let's say a turn like this, it's a four-way stop, pretty simple, does it perfectly. No cars, no anything, 
it knows exactly what to do. But then there's other situations where it just completely freaks out and I'm just not sure why. I would love to know what that reasoning is. Like what is that one obstacle that really tricks the computer? Because it's gotta be there. Besides the fact that uh, this car is driving itself, the next coolest thing that I really enjoy about this is the visualizations. The amount of detail that you can see on the screen is kind of mind blowing and it really lets you know that the cameras are actually working. Now granted, you should never base anything off of the visualizations itself, but it does give you a little bit more confidence when you know that the car can see the person, the pedestrian walking across the street, or the car next to you. It just helps you know that the car at least sees it, whether or not it's going to do the right thing, that's a different question. But the fact that I can see all the cars crossing at an intersection with a pedestrian, someone on a bike, the fact that all of those things are working and they are working in such real time, is just really cool. Add that on top of the fact that the car's driving itself, this is, this is just a cool package. Being around other cars and other people is always what makes using autopilot, even the regular, not even just the full self-driving beta, but just autopilot in general, being around other cars is what makes it so nerve wracking because you never quite know exactly how the car is going to react. After time and you get used to it, you can kind of see where the car is going to make mistakes, where you really need to you know, take over that kind of stuff. But when you're on the streets and there's so many more variables, traffic is when you're really having to pay the most attention because you never know what the other cars are going to do and whether or not the car that you're in, this Tesla Model 3, is going to react appropriately. The biggest issue I've found in traffic though is that the car has a mind of its own and although it follows all of the laws and regulations, like it's never really doing anything that is illegal, it just always feels like it's making people around me a little angry. So I'll hit the brakes a little too hard, or I say me, but the car will hit the brakes a little too hard and slow down when it probably shouldn't have, or it'll turn really slow at a stoplight. All that kind of stuff makes everyone around you, although it's not dangerous, it's just so annoying, and I'm sure everyone around me is looking at me funny, like, why is this person driving this way? Uh, but I guess better safe than sorry, but in certain situations, I can actually see that being more dangerous than just going with the flow and doing everything it should be doing. And also the speed limit. Most of the places around me are a 25 mile an hour speed limit, although that is very much a recommendation because nobody goes that speed at all. And so when the car sees 25 miles an hour and I'm going 25, everyone else around me is going 45. I mean, yeah, technically it should be going 25, but it's actually probably more dangerous for the car to go with the actual speed limit rather than what the cars are doing. I'm not exactly sure what the solution for that is, except for me having to change it constantly with the scroll wheel. I guess that's a good solution for now, just so I can be in control of that. But once this is actual full self-driving, there's gonna have to come a point where the car's gonna have to decide what speed is best for the situation. So if cars are going really fast around me, even though the speed limit maybe is slower, maybe the car should speed up. I don't know, there's probably a solution there, but that's another big annoyance, especially when you're in traffic. So the name of the game with this system is disengagement. How many times are you going to have to take over for the car because it went wrong, something messed up, and you need to take control? And so far in my testing, even though it's only been about a day and a half, this is something I've had to do on every single drive. There's at least one instance where I have to take over, and sure, maybe the car would have figured it out, but I'm not taking that chance. I'd rather log the issue, send it to Tesla, because there's some kind of issue that made me feel uncomfortable so they can hopefully fix it in the future if i can ever get to the point where i don't get uncomfortable then that will be great but for now there's multiple times on every single drive where i have okay so that is the full self-driving beta and some of the situations that i think it does really well at and not so well at those are really all the ones that you encounter the going straight in the line does that really well turning it's really hit or miss and traffic and all that. It has a long ways to go, but considering how early these betas are, I'm actually pretty impressed. Now the big question, when will this be ready for normal people, for instance, like my parents? When will they be able to get in the car and just go and not have to really think about it all that much or at all? Uh, I still think we're a long ways off from that. Not only because of the technology, which I think actually will get 
quote unquote mastered uh, relatively quickly, at least in the grand scheme of things, like within five years, I think we could very easily be there. But then the regulations, that's a whole different category of you know issues that they would have to deal with before it's completely available. Although who knows, Tesla being Tesla, they might just do it without any permission or anything like that. I can easily see that happening. But you know, for this to be completely done and ready for the public, I still think we're a long ways off, especially after experiencing it as it is today. Although that being said, I'm extremely optimistic for the future. I think it will happen one day. It's just whether it's gonna happen soon.